Hello, welcome to another video in Horta Americas TV. This time, we will try to quickly explain very helpful information for letters production under artificial lighting. This is Carla Garcia, Horta Americas Technical Service. Please join me today in this video called Management of Artificial Lighting in Lettuce Production. What you should know when using artificial lighting in lettuce production? Let's start from basics. Where can we use artificial lighting for lettuce production? Artificial lighting can be used in uh, indoor systems, including greenhouse production and vertical farming in plant factories. It is important to recognize these two systems are different and provide different conditions to our plants. Therefore, the management of light will also be different. But first of all, you are probably asking, why can I be interested in using artificial lighting inside of greenhouses where we already have natural light? Well, there are two main reasons for this. One is quality. The leafy greens business gets more and more competition every, every day. So one way to guarantee a perfect color, texture, and even nutrient content is with artificial lighting, which will provide the right spectrum and the uniform light to boost quality on your product. The second reason will be temperature control inside of our greenhouse. Several studies have demonstrated the use of artificial lighting during warm weather can help you to save some money from cooling. How? By using shake loads to reduce solar radiation and heat inside of the greenhouse, but keeping perfect growth with artificial supplemental lighting. Awesome, don't you think? And now let's speak a little bit about vertical farms. Inside of plant factories like vertical farms, artificial lighting is mandatory. We need light to make those plants grow. So now let's focus on the difference between these two different systems in terms of light management. Ambient in these two systems is a little bit different. Greenhouses have large volume of air where our plants can do gas exchange and transpiration without problem most of the time. On the other hand, in vertical farming, air density can be a little higher in each layer because we have less space. Therefore, humidity can uh, increase and accumulate in each layer if we don't have proper ventilation. Friction of air over the canopy surface will create a large boundary layer inside of vertical farms. The boundary layer in easy words can be defined as a bubble of heavy air over or leaves, which can reduce gas exchange and also the uptake of water and nutrients. This is a, this is a consequence of friction of air with the leaf surface. But why is this important when speaking about light management? Well, in vertical farms, we need to consider our ambient before applying artificial lighting. High DLI levels can accelerate plant growth, but we need to remember ambient in vertical farms can affect the uptake of nutrients. Therefore, it's recommended to use a maximum of 70 DLI inside of vertical farming systems. This is in order to avoid deep burn, which is linked to calcium deficiency. High DLI can accelerate plant growth, but if calcium cannot arrive on time to new leaves growing, we will see deep burn. In a greenhouse system, ambient is different. We have more volume of air and the DLI can be higher than 17 without having this problem of deep burn related to light. We can see deep burn inside of the greenhouse, but most of the time, the cows will be poor ventilation inside of the greenhouse. The optimum level of DLI for lettuce is 17. And in here, we can see how days to harvest can be reduced when we grow plants under the recommended levels. There are two factors which can affect the good results that artificial lighting can provide to your plants. One is 
poor levels of CO2. The other one is poor nutrition. CO2 can go from ambient levels to 1,500 ppm for lettuce production. Ambient CO2 is enough to grow good plants, but if you want to improve a little bit your production, you can do CO2 injection. Now I will share with you some advice on how to adjust nutrient and light for lettuce production in different stage of development. Seeding and germination. When lettuce is germinating, light and nutrient requirements can be lower than usual. You can start with a DLI between 10 and 12 and easy levels can be between 0.5 to 0.6 microsiemens. Now moving to transplants. Transplants with true leaves now can receive more light and nutrients. You can keep levels of DLI between 12 to 17 and use a EC of 1.8 to 2.4 microsiemens during winter and a EC level of 1.4 to 1.6 during the summer. This is because we want to make easier for the plant to take up nutrients. The last stage is finishing or maturation. This is the stage when the plant can get the more light. You can adjust your light in vertical farming systems to provide a maximum DLI of 17. If you are working inside a greenhouse, remember you can go above 17 without having any problems. ESO levels will be maintained as the same as in our transplant phase. Obviously, in order to monitor light and EC, you will need a great equipment. Here are some excellent sources to uh, monitor light and also nutrition. In Hort Americas, we offer sensors that can provide exact light in your system, or we can also uh, offer you handheld sensors, which can measure instantaneous light. This is very helpful in vertical farming system, where uh, the whole source of light is artificial. Well guys, that is all for today. I wanted to share just quickly and useful information that we sometimes miss when using artificial lighting. I hope you like it and please subscribe if you want to continue learning about this and more topics related to indoor production. This is Carla Garcia, Hort America's Technical Service. See you in our next video.